Well, praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. It is a great thing for us to be here tonight. God has allowed us, he's permitted us in his infamous wisdom to gather in this virtual space. And for those that God has continually led your heart to join us, to be with us on this Thursday evening, it's not about accidents or coincidence that you have the pulling on your heart to be here that God has connected us in the spirit for you to, and for, and for I, um, to take advantage of this time together to grow inside of our relationship with him. The like iron, shop in the iron. And so tonight, it is my hope and prayer that you came into this virtual space with great expectation, expectation to hear God's voice, expectation to glean from God's word. What I'm praying for is that God give us all a hunger for his word. That void that is often inside of our lives that we attempt to try to fill with things. We try to fill it with broken relationships. We try to fill it with stuff. We try to fill it with more money. We try to uh, fill it with more accomplishment. We try to fill it by becoming workaholics. That void will never be filled if we don't turn our attention to the word. If we don't turn our attention to God, it is his word that give life. It is his word that give us light. It is his word that sustain us. And so we need word. I dare you to type that down in the chat and say, I need word. I don't, it's not, it's not people I seek. It's not relationships that I seek. It's not things that I seek. It's not status that I seek. It's not position that I seek. What I'm seeking for in this season in my life is more of God. Mm, that's where that's where I challenge all of us to be to forsake everything else and go after God. Say it with me, if you will. Say, it. in this season, I'm going after God. Mm. Going after things has not fulfilled that void, that emptiness, accomplishment. Things in life has not filled the void. Entering to new relationships have not filled the void. And, and, and people have the tendency to jump from relationship to relationship to relationship because they feel like something is missing in every relationship that they're going into. But here's the challenge. And when you get into relationships with someone who is having the same void that you have, uh, two voids do not make a whole. Oh, I feel preaching tonight. Huh? You can't take two voids. Huh? I know in math they teach you um, two halves make a whole. Huh? That is in practical context. That's in mathematical context. Huh? But in spiritual context, huh? a half of uh, a, a whole does not make one whole because it's only God who can fill that emptiness. And when God fills it, he don't give you half of him. God gives you all of him. And I want you to have a thirst, a hunger for God like you never had it before. In these days and times in which we're living in, you don't have time to play it safe. You don't have time to be cute about your relationship. You got to forsake all others and go out to God with all of your strength, with all of your might, with all of your heart. So what if they laugh? If what if they walk out of your life? They may have been a part of the void or the part of the reason you had the void because they were blocking your relationship with God. I want to pause right now before we even pray and just praise God for the those who was hindering your relationship for God and who walked out of your life, I want you to praise God tonight to say, God, thank you for everybody who exited out of my life because I didn't realize the emptiness, the void I had in my life until they left me. Mm. 
I thought it was them who were sustaining me, but all of alone, they were just a band-aid on the issue that I really had. And God, what I really needed was more of you. I, I dare you to throw your hands up wherever you are now in this virtual space and say, God, what I need now in this season in my life is more of you. God, I need more of you, more of you in my prayer life, more of you in my relationships, more more of you in my family life. I need more of you. I can't make it without you. I can't breathe without you. I can't do it without you. God, I need more of you. And that is the attitude that you have to walk around in. They say, except God do it, it can't be done. Except God build the city, they that labor, labor in vain. Except God watch over us and keep us, our watching is in vain. We need more of God. And I'm just talking to you. I got, I'm about to get to the text. But I feel a pulling, a burning desire. I feel an unction from the Holy Spirit that is saying what is missing in this season is a hunger and a thirst for righteousness. It's, it's a hunger and a thirst in the culture in which we live, in the society in which we live, where everyone is, is big enough to do whatever that makes their flesh feel good. We have excluded or excommunicated God out of our lives. And I am challenging those who call themselves believers to move from carnality and to turn our attention back to God. I feel power in this space, in this room right now. When God speaks, who can but prophesy? I, I feel the unction of the Lord who is challenging those of us who are present tonight to turn our attention from uh, the natural, to turn our attention to form corner things and set our affections on things which are above, things which add value to our lives. And that's what God wants to do in this season in your life. He wants to add value to your life. It's not about who appalls you. It's not about who includes you. It's not about who salutes you. What it's about in this season in your life is for you to get to understand and see God clear in your life. I wish I can come through that screen and let you know that God is shaking you up out of sleep and wake up. Huh? You've wasted too much time waiting on people to like you. You wasted too much time asking people to include you. You wasted too much time wondering about what they think and what they feel about the situation. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That is a mandate on your life. That is a calling on your life. There is a purpose on your life that you can't go back to what you came out of. I feel Jesus. I, I, I'm getting to the text. I got this. I got to speak what the auction is telling me now during our Bible study time that you can't go back to what God had pulled you out of it. For if he pull you out of it, he pull you out of it because what you were in huh, was keeping you from here. And sometimes God will snatch you out of situations. Huh, that would keep you from him. God would drag you back to him. Mm -hmm. Prodigal son, prodigal daughter, he will allow you to get in the pig pens and get so dirty that you will understand that I don't belong here. In some of the places we've been, we didn't belong. We were dirtying ourselves up, but yet we still was a son. We still were daughters. That, but although we had dirt on us, it did not disqualify us from being the sons and the daughters of God, and I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you are right now. God still loves you. He still loves you. So what if they are condemning you? I want to say to you, Romans 8 and 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation. You did it. You felt bad about it, but what you did has been done. If you can do it all over again, you will go back and change it. But because you can't change it, I'm going to say to you that the record is clear because we have an advocate. If we do sin, we have an advocate with God. It is Jesus to Christ, and he is so faithful. He said, if we confess our sins, 
John, first John the one and nine, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So tonight I want to tell you that tonight is your night. Tonight is your night that God is about to get glory. Uh, out of the situation. Let us pray. I am, I am excited to have you here. We just came out of Resurrection Sunday and the power of God failed inside of the house. And I feel the, the, the same spirit in this moment um, that if Christ does not get up from the grave, our preaching is in vain. Our Bible study is in vain. Our church going is in vain. Our singing is in vain. Our worship is in vain. But because he got up, oh, we can throw our hands up and give him all of the glory. Because he got up, we can shout the victory. Let us pray in this place. And we, I got 20 minutes and we'll be out of here. Father, we thank you tonight. Hey, yes, that you got up from the grave with all power. Now, that there's no slack of promises aside of you, God. That if you said it, you'll make it come to good. You're not slack concerning your promises. God, as men count slackness. But God, you have been so long suffering towards us. God, you're calling us back to you. And so tonight, let the word stretch us in ways that we've never been stretched before. For where there is no challenge, God, there is no growth. Let your word challenge us tonight that we may grow into the full statue of who Christ is. It's just in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. So we got, uh, oh God, we only have um, 17 minutes and let me go. We're in a new series. We just came out of our series prayer more than words. We just came out of that series, prayer more than words. That's the series that we were in. Um, we concluded that series on maturing in prayer. You got the mature. Tonight, we enter into a new series, and the new series is entitled Essential Power. Mm. Essential Power. Now, um, we've talked about power before um, from another perspective tonight we enter into a whole new perspective on power um, or a new context of power I'll say it that way remember when we talked about power before we talked about the four words the Greek words that are used in the Greek uh, about power our English word power does not give justice to the Greek word power um, it is not synonymous with all of the renderings of the Greek word power what do I mean and I oftentimes in our Bible particularly the King James Bible, um, we have the word power that is used in the English, but it may mean something different in the Greek. And so I will do a quick recap right quick for you, for you to remember those words of power that we have used before. The four words I want you to recall. Number one, dudamus. That dunamis is that power which is used often inside the Bible, or the word is used often inside the Bible, and it is that um, it is supernatural power, or is that power that can duplicate or replicate itself. That is that is dunamis. Then we got exousia, which is the second word that's used often for power, which is a authority it is the right or the prescribed authority to to carry out something um we have two other greek words we have the word kratos um kratos is the power that represents dominion it's dominion uh and then we have the word iscus iscus is the power to um our natural strength to worship the lord with all our iscus our strength Tonight, we turn your attention to Acts chapter 1 and 8 with understanding of the concept of power in the back of your minds. Um, Jesus says this and, and Acts, well, let me give you a, a brief context for the sake of time. Acts chapter 1, verse 7 and 8, he says in verse 7, he says, and he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons. It's not for you to know which the Father has put in what his own power. Here it is, but you shall receive power. When shall you receive this power? 
after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the utmost part of the earth. In our new series, Essential Power, our first study tonight, I want to talk to you about power for mission. Power for mission. Power for mission. Um in this context and what Jesus is talking to, talking to her is very interesting how power has been used. Jesus is talking about some type of special power. Um, the reason I say that is in Luke chapter nine, um, verse, yes, verse one and one through two, when Jesus sends out the 12, he gives them power and authority over unclean spirits. So there was a sense of operating in power. Uh, he gave them dudamus and he gave them exousia. That's in Luke chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. In Luke chapter 24, um, Jesus is on the road to Emmaus. He's talking to the disciples uh, and he says to them in around verse 49, he says, Behold, I send you or behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem, here it is, until you are endured, or endued, excuse me, with power from on high. It's interesting that you could not walk with Jesus and not have a conversation about power. Um, and this day and age in which we live in, we have too many powerless Christians. Don't let that upset the apricot. <laughs> the truth of the matter is we have too many powerless Believers, I didn't say you didn't believe. I didn't say they didn't believe. I didn't say they weren't Christians. What I said was they were believers or Christians without power. Hmm. It often bothered me um, why people struggle with operating as a believer or operating as a Christian, as a follower of Christ. Um, the reason I say that this is different power, this is power for mission, or this is a special power, is that um, it, 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 power, Jesus just don't give us power to become believers. Um, I got to do some work here tonight. I'm not, I know we're not going to have enough time, but I need to start off tonight. In John chapter 1, um, verse 12, I believe it is. Yes, the, in John chapter 1, verse 12, the scriptures are class, but as many as received him to them, he gave power. He gave exousia, the authority to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, um, Jesus is not talking about power to be saved. That's clear that that's clear the records. The disciples here, the apostles here, are already believers of Jesus. If they were not believers of Jesus, they would not be waiting from to be endued with power from on high. They are already saved. Somebody say they are already saved. Come on, say they already believe. They are already witnesses. They, I mean, they are already believers. They are already disciples. And so this is not power for them to be saved. And, and, and in fact, they are so much believers that before the power of the day of Pentecost, which we are now approaching, well, we're not approaching yet, but we begin this 50 day journey to Pentecost. Um, and, and that's why we're in this series about power, because when we get to Pentecost, I want you to understand the power that God has called you to operate in. Um, I want you to, 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 to picture this, if you will. Um, these disciples are in the upper room. And while they're in the upper room, they're waiting in the book of Acts to be endued with power. And so the question becomes then, are they totally powerless? Are they totally without power? Remember in Luke 24, Jesus is saying that they need to go to a place to be endued with power. And so the question is, what are they waiting for? Why in Acts chapter one, verse eight, they have to wait for power. 
or they had to be clothed from power on from on high. I, I'm going to tell you, um, the reason they are waiting to be empowered on high. Remember, they when the sheep was struck, struck the sheep sat scattered. They didn't have power to do what Jesus commissioned them to do. Okay, I'm finna, I'm finna, I'm finna help, I'm finna help us tonight. Um, Jesus says, when you receive this power, this special power on high, Rome X chapter one and eight, uh, that this power is gonna produce something inside of you. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what Jesus is saying. Why right? I'm just dealing with the night with the mission power to to mission. Um, Jesus says you need power. That you need power in order to be a witness. Notice, power precedes being a witness. Hmm. The reason sometimes we or, or others are afraid to share their faith is because there's no power behind sharing the faith. I, I want to talk to you. Um, the reason we need this power on high is simply Jesus says, after you, after after the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, you shall receive power, and you shall be witnesses to me. Now, I don't want you to get this twisted. Um, this word witness here in the Greek is a very, um, I told you the English word um, doesn't give us justice to all of the Greek. And so we have to understand the word in its original context. Um, the Greek here is you shall receive uh, dunamis, um and you shall become martyrs. Or martyr in the Greek, where we get our English word. Here it is. Are you ready for this? Martyr. Let me spell that for you so there won't be no confusion here. In the Greek, martyrs or martyr, M A R T U S, or martyr, M A R T U R. That's the Greek. In the English, to be martyr is M A R T. Y R, which means one who bears witness, here it is, by his death. Mm. Ooh, I know we don't have enough time tonight, but I got to start somewhere. We tell we got to start somewhere. Um we got to start somewhere. And so and so Jesus says, You shall receive power, here it is, to be witnesses to me by willing to die. For what you believe. Mm. And the enemy has the tendency to try to make you bashful or fearful about your faith. Jesus give us power. Notice this. The disciples in this context are thinking, now is this the time that you're about to bring us from on a Roman rule, on a Roman authority? And in Acts chapter 7, verse 1, verse, excuse me, verse 1, chapter 7, Jesus emphatically says to them, it is not for you to know the times or the season which the Father has put in his own authority. They were thinking that now is our time to 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 replace Caesar and for God to raise up for us a new king, a new disciple. Jesus has resurrected from the dead and they are still not fully understanding what Jesus is calling them to, which says to us tonight that you can be saved and still not understand the calling. Mm, that's why you need this power. You can be saved and not understanding the call. The call has not changed. Mm. We as believers have the tendency to wonder what our purpose is and what God is calling us to. And the answer is right here in the text. I give you power to be witnesses. <laughs> nothing deeper, nothing more. I know this is about to mess some of your faith up. It's, it's nothing deeper, nothing more. Matthew chapter 28, huh? all 
power, all authority has been given to me both in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make the disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Watch this. And lo, I'm with you always when you fulfill the call and the purpose and the mission. Mm. Jesus and do us with power to be missionaries. <laughs> oh God. Oh, I know, I know this might be tough right here. Um, uh, because the power that we have is not to boast in ourselves, but it is power to do that which we and our natural being would be afraid to do. But when Jesus really saves us, when we really get power from on high, we're not afraid of our faith. Mm. Um, he says, you shall receive power. Mm -hmm. He said, you, you all concept of power um, is not the type of mission I'm sending you to. I'm not here to up overthrow Rome. I have a different purpose. I have a different plan. I have a different agenda. And my agenda is for you to be marchers or be willing to die for what you believe in. Mm, that this casual Christianity that we have now, this comfortable Christianity that we have now, where we want people to like us and we don't want to compel men and women to come to Christ. It takes a certain type of power to operate in. And there's a tendency to get frustrated with individuals who don't witness for Christ. But you have to understand you only become a witness when you receive the power. You say that's not scripture. I got it. For, I got it for you right here. I'm reading in the King James Version. It, the letters is in red. Uh, it says here in the King James Version, uh, and you shall be witnesses. Notice it was not optional. Ah, receiving the power of the Holy Spirit uh, does not give you the option to be witness. It is a command to be witnesses. Once, once I empower you, you can't help but to witness. Mm. I, I, listen, listen. Uh, it is a statement of fact what Jesus said. He says, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall witness. The words shall be are indicative, if you will, not the imperative. What do I mean? Um, Jesus didn't recommend that they become witness. He said that you would be witnesses. So if we want to be witnesses, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus is saying, I'm not sending the Holy Spirit to shout you. I'm not sending the Holy Spirit to make you speak in tongues. I'm, I'm giving you the Spirit. Mm to be an evangelist, to be a missionary. So the best training program for evangelism, I'm going to holler here for the church, for the, the house of God, is to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Oh, I'm not. There is no evangelism where there's no power. There is no evangelistic ministry where there is no power. And God is calling us, has called us, and will continue to call us to be witnesses to him, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. But what I want you to notice first and foremost here in the text, that Jesus says that if you're going to be a witness for me, I'm giving you the courage. Here is the power to deny yourself. Oh, what time? I got to get out of here. We just starting. This is getting good. He says that the first thing to be witness, to be a martyr, you have to be willing to die to yourself. So when the Holy Spirit falls upon you in power, your witness to Christ comes with self-denying, which comes with a sense of courage and boldness. There's no such thing as a person who's been empowered by the Holy Spirit who does not have boldness. Mm. Where there is no boldness, there's no empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Paul said to Timothy, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of, that's the word power. 
Ooh. <laughs> And of a sound mind, watch this, um, he says, Timothy, let no one despise your youth, um, but be an example to them. In other words, you have to deny yourself and have a sense of courage and boldness to walk with the power of the Holy Spirit. Again, I call it to you, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. Paul says that God did not give us the spirit of timidity, the spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, a spirit of love, a spirit of self-control. So, so what Paul said, do not be ashamed then of testifying to our Lord, but take your share. Here it is, a suffering for the gospel and the power of God. So the question becomes, where do I get this boldness to be a witness? I'm glad you asked. It comes from the fullness of the Holy Spirit. You can't suffer for Christ if there's no Holy Spirit or no power from the Spirit. And we'll see this throughout the book of Acts. Uh, they were beaten, they were shipwrecked, they were stoned, and they was left for dead. Uh, not because they was operating in the natural man, but they were operating from the power of the Holy Spirit. And so to reach Jerusalem, to reach Judea, to reach Samaria, it was going to take power. I want to say to you, as we conclude tonight, I, I want to be respectful of your time. We're going to pick this up next week, but you need power. Hmm. You need power. You need power. Um. <laughs> I, I got to give you one more scripture, and I promise you, I, we're about to get out of here. I, I'm, I'm trying to give you a scripture, and I'm trying to get out of here at the same time. I, I think it's First Thessalonians. Um, First Thessalonians chapter... Five. Here it is. Excuse me, not chapter five. Ch ch verse one. Chapter one, verse five. The, the scripture says that we're going to end on this note. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as you know, what manner of men we were among you for your sake, that when God clothes us or endues us, as Luke 24, 49 says, um, when he dues us or clothes us with, with, with power, it comes with a witness um, that we have with a, um, a certain level of confidence, a certain level of, of conviction, and that the power of God comes upon us and it wraps us and takes us in an area to strengthen our testimony. They had walked with Christ. They had seen the miracles. But Jesus says, you've been walking with me, but you still need power. You see me work miracles, but you still need power. You saw me, you witnessed this, but I ain't saying been witness to the things. I'm not saying just been witness to the miracles, but I want you to be witnesses to the power that the kingdom of God has come. And so we need power because we need this deep abiding conviction to be able to speak about Christ. And when you have the power of the Holy Ghost, you speak more about Christ, watch this, than you do about stuff. I got to get out of here. If my conversation is all the way about stuff and not about bringing people to Christ, not about mission. Listen, Romans chapter um, 13, huh? um, the, the, the time is far spent. Now it's time for us to wake up out of sleep for our salvation is closer than when we first be believe. I we started beginning of January that we're on the mission to save souls. As a believer, I'm asking you to pray for the power of the Holy Spirit that you can become a witness, that you can be on this mission, missionary field to bring people to Christ, that they may ask, what must we do to be saved? If you're a person who's listening tonight and you don't know the Lord as your personal savior, this is the right time for you to be here. I want to say this to you, that God loves you right where you are. There's nothing you can do that can separate you from the love of Christ. There's nothing you can do. So join me in this simple word of prayer from your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, save me. Be both Lord, Master, and Savior of my life.
It's in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen and amen. Now, if you pray that prayer for the first time, welcome to the body of Christ. We would love to hear from you. Send us a message here online or visit us on our church website at topchurch.org. Um, send us a message there online or here on this platform. We would love to hear from you. We would love to, for you to consider getting baptized or to, to consider being a part of this ministry or being a partner of TOP Ministries because we are, we're, we're expanding the kingdom and we're out the souls. Join us as we do that. I'm going to ask you tonight to also consider sowing the seed tonight, sowing into the ministry, sowing into the work of the ministry. There's different ways you can give, as you see here on the screen, um, whatever level of gift you give, we are so grateful. I want you to consider, if you're not a member here, I want you to consider becoming a partner of TOP Ministry by considering tithing to the ministry, considering giving a monthly um, contribution to the ministry or weekly contribution, whatever level of giving you want to give to help us further the gospel of the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, it's time for us to leave this section, but not never God's grace. It is my hope and prayer as we leave this place, but never God's grace, that the Lord will bless you and keep you, that his face will shine upon you and be gracious unto you, that the Lord will lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. And remember that I love you to life. <laughs>